if you're using UWorld properly, it literally can make the difference between a pass and fail on step one or even like a 220 and a 250 on step two. Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anu Oyetoran and I am a medical graduate from St. George's University. If this is your first time here or if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button somewhere below. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about how to use UWorld effectively. I've done multiple videos on my channel talking about UWorld and how good it is for shelf exams, for step one, for step two, for literally anything. So I decided that I've been talking about UWorld and using UWorld, but there's a wrong way to use UWorld. So I wanted to talk to you guys about how to do it well. So stay tuned. If this is something you're interested in, make sure you give me a like as well. And feel free to comment below if you have any questions or if you have any requests for future videos related to UWorld or anything else. All right, so let's get right into it. The first thing to know is that UWorld is not just a testing tool. It is a studying tool as well. This is important to know. This took me a while actually to know. I got UWorld, I think, at the beginning of term five. So that was my last term before going for clinicals and second year of medical school. And when I saw it, I just thought to myself, these are questions and, you know, questions usually are for testing purposes. So I always just told myself I would do it. I would do UWorld after I'm done studying for whatever exam it was I was studying for at the time. So I would end up using UWorld like maybe three days before the exam, which is not the most effective way to use UWorld. It was until I realized that UWorld is also a studying tool. In a sense, it's kind of like a textbook um, because of the detailed explanation that every single question provides. And also, even furthermore, you're learning how question makers think just by doing UWorld. Firstly, take it out of your mind that UWorld is a testing tool. It is, yes, but it's also much more a studying tool than a testing tool. The explanations are so detailed that literally for some exams, for example, step two CK, you probably can just use UWorld and you'll be fine. There are countless videos on YouTube online about you know creators and medical students who just used UWorld and they were fine. So if you're using UWorld properly, it literally can make the difference between a pass and fail on step one or even like a 220 and a 250 on step two. One thing I want to say before I move on to the next point is that a lot of medical students get caught up in you know what their percentage is on UWorld, world and I get that we're medical students we literally have lived most of our lives worrying about our grades you know wanting to do well on paper you never want to see 40 percent on anything but the thing about UWorld world is if you're using it properly, even if you're getting a 40% average on UWorld and you're using it properly, you might be better off than someone who's getting like a 75, an 80 on UWorld and just using it as a testing tool. So for UWorld, just forget about the percentages. Make sure that you're getting knowledge from every single question that you do. You're reviewing those questions and you're making progress no matter what it is that the score says. So my second tip would be to do UWorld in tutored mode for the first pass. You don't have to do all of it in tutored mode, but at least there should be a significant portion that you do in tutored mode. And I say this because UWorld can be taken in timed mode, tutored mode, or timed tutored mode. And the difference is with tutored mode, you can create a question um, block of 40 questions, 20 questions, however many questions you want. But then with tutored mode, you can submit each question after you're done them. So you can read through them, you know, gain the knowledge and then move on to the next one. Whereas with time mode, until you're done the amount of questions that you have put in, you're not able to submit the questions and see the answers. So I say that it should be done in tutored mode for your first pass because I think that it's important to make sure that you're learning as you're going through those questions so that when you see something similar pop up in maybe the next four questions down, you're able to recall and review almost what it is that you had learned before because you are submitting every single question and you're reading through the explanations and you know, you're know you increasing your knowledge and you're making progress as you go through the questions. It's also great for note taking because you're pausing after every question so you have the time to basically read through the explanations and take notes, highlight the important things or the things that you did not know before, as opposed to having maybe 40 questions now to go through and you're not spending time on each question as much as you should. Also, it kind of gives you an insight into the question maker's thought process, your thought process, and just the thought process of 
the question in general. Apart from, you know, doing it in tutored mode, obviously you should definitely do it in timed mode as well because there are other advantages to that. But with tutored mode, it's almost like you're tutoring yourself per question and you're using it more as a studying tool that we talked about as opposed to a testing tool. My third point would be for you to do your world systematically and I'm talking about your first pass through. When you're using your world in um, basic sciences or before your clinical years, it's important for you to do it systematically. So if in your classes you're learning about um, cardio or you're learning about renal or you're learning about pulmonary, make sure that you're doing your world according to whatever it is that you're learning in class because your brain makes connections that way. It makes connections to whatever it is that you've learned in class and whatever it is that you've learned in your world. And so you understand, you get a fuller picture of the system that you're learning. And then eventually when you move on to another system, um, you're able to make connections from cardio to renal, for example. And that kind of works well for you. But even as you do that systematically, it's also important that maybe on the weekends you can do one block with all questions. Like if you've learned cardio and renal that week, then you could do a block of 40 questions with just cardio and renal questions so that you're not just thinking cardio, or not just thinking renal. Because a lot of the times these questions come together in one form. There might be one question that has components of cardio, renal, GI, and you know, you don't want to limit yourself to only thinking in one system. As I mentioned earlier, it's important to take notes as well. I have a video coming out next week on how to take notes on your world and also how to um, basically read through every question because there's a systematic way to read through questions, not just on your world, but also um, when you get to your exam place. So for step one, step two, whatever exam it is you're taking, there's a systematic way to read through questions and it is important for you to be able to read through questions properly so you can understand what the question is asking you. And sometimes it helps you to save time. So um, one tip I'm going to say right now is it's always important to read the last line of a question first because from the last line of a question, you can tell what it is that the question writer wants you to answer. And so your mind is focused on that as you read through the question and you read through the options. But yeah, watch out for that video next week. And my last point for today is to do timed eventually. So eventually you're going to be a pro or at least you would have developed enough knowledge and enough understanding of how to answer questions that it is okay for you to go to timed mode, especially when you're in doing your second pass of your world or you feel more comfortable with the subject, then do timed mode because that also helps you practice for what the actual exam would be. No matter what it is that we do, unfortunately during exams, we cannot pause after every question and you know take a moment you have to train your brain to be able to do 40 questions at a time because step one and step two and step three come in blocks of 40 questions. I'm actually not sure about step three, but I know for sure for step one and for step two. So you definitely want to train yourself to that point where you can do timed questions. Also, that helps with people who have test taking anxiety because you're almost able to simulate the same exam environment and just you know let your brain kind of get used to that kind of pressure. Um, and while taking the world blocks. If you watch my step one or my step two videos, I talk about how two weeks before the exam, I usually put myself in um, exam taking mode. So basically I do, for step one, I did seven blocks of UWorld every other day. And for step two, I did eight blocks of UWorld every other day, just to put myself into that exam taking mode and to help my brain understand that it's fine like this is something we've done before when i eventually get to the example that is it for today's video guys i hope that you enjoyed it if you did if it was helpful for you please go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you would like to ask me questions or you'd like to reach out to me you can do so by um, reaching out in my comments you can reach out to me on instagram or facebook i'm always very happy to answer questions and please subscribe if you have not and i will see you guys next time bye